Our universe is filled with matter. Antimatter is matter's opposite twin. In theory, our universe should be filled with equal amounts of both, yet it is not. Our universe is filled with one part antimatter for every one billion parts of matter, and we really do not understand why this is. Speculation is that maybe its behaviour is different from its opposite twin, and hence possibly accounting for its rarity. For the first time ever, scientists have performed the double slit experiment with positrons. As we have discussed in our overview of what time is, particles can act as either a particle or a wave. And when these particles are fired at a double slit, we find that they act like a wave and create an interference pattern. Even if the particles are sent through one by one, the same wave pattern will be seen over a prolonged period of time. In a world's first, scientists in Italy and Switzerland have reproduced part of this experiment with electrons opposite twin, the positron. And they discovered that they reproduce the same interference pattern even if they are sent through one by one. Now, this is an important step into understanding how antimatter behaves and it may help further determine where all our antimatter is. Now, sadly, they were not able to verify if the observer effect still holds for antimatter, and it would certainly be mind-bending if it did not. Physicists have long wondered if the gravitational interaction between antimatter and matter might be different than that between matter and itself. Do atoms made of antimatter, like antihydrogen, fall at a different rate to those made of matter? Or might it even fall upwards, like antigravity? There are many arguments that can make the case that the interaction must be the same, but no one has ever observed what anti-atoms do in a gravitational field. That is, until alpha collaboration scientists published their results in Nature Communications. Now their results are not conclusive in terms of understanding how gravity affects uh, antimatter. So here is a statement from their results. We observed that the times and positions at which 434 trapped antihydrogen atoms escaped our magnetic trap and search for the influence of a gravitational force. Based on our data, we can exclude the possibility that the gravitational mass of antihydrogen is more than 110 times its inertial mass, or that it falls upwards with a gravitational mass more than 65 times its inertial mass. So in other words, they have measured the rate at which these uh, hydrogen atoms fall and linked their mass to their inertia, so their movement. But at the moment, the way that they obviously have to conduct the experiment, they cannot say whether that movement is uh, against the force of gravity or with the force of gravity. Again, these are important steps in order for us to understand how matter and antimatter behaves. Now, one of the reasons I find this article particularly interesting is because Hannes Alvin believed that a lot of the electric circuits we see across our universe could be powered by matter antimatter interactions, which release vast amounts of energy when they come into proximity. Could it be that this matter is lurking in the energetic centers of our galaxies? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.